Baseball and superstition have gone together since the days of the Solemn Witch Trials, and one of the biggest proponents came from one of baseball's best characters, an Earl Weaver. While managing the Orioles for nearly two decades, his belief in superstition helped him become a Hall of Fame manager and spread to his players. So let's look at the superstitious beliefs within Earl Weaver's clubhouse and the game itself. Totally sports-esque. Major League. To easily find how attached superstition is to baseball, then you can easily look at the many supposed curses placed on teams, ranging from the curse of the Bambino, to the curse of the Billy Goat, to the curse of being a Mariners fan. And naturally many players delve into superstition, thinking it has an effect on their performance. Many players eat certain things before games, such as Justin Verlander who eats three crunchy Taco Supremes before each start. Bryce Harper has said he takes multiple showers before games, while Brandon Marsh does so between innings. And you can see players have the same mini routines before each pitch. But for a team as a whole that may have been the most superstitious, it was probably the Earl Weaver-led Orioles. Weaver was at the top of the helm from 1968 to 82, then came back in 85 and 86. And what he's most remembered for was his fiery and entertaining personality that led to 96 ejections, the fourth most of all time. But with all the ejections, he also has the 17th most wins of all time for a manager. And though he appears to be a very old school, no nonsense coach, he was a very rational coach relying on statistics in a time well before Ivy League graduates told managers what to do. And his philosophy resulted in a lot of success. He had a 583 winning percentage as the Orioles manager, and won four pennants and a World Series in 1970. And part of the reason his philosophies worked is the loyalty he showed towards his players, often siding with them as they look for raises. And this trust allowed Weaver to enforce dress codes and policies for his players as he demanded his players not call him coach. And aside from his philosophies and personality, another aspect of Weaver that spread to his players was his superstitions. Weaver smoked two packs a day and had no shame in smoking in the dugout, and he rationalized his addiction in dugout smokes by saying that the Orioles gave up runs every time he didn't fill his lungs with smoke between innings. He also had a good luck pull in the dugout that he leaned on and made sure no one came close to. He didn't look at the clock while they were winning and made sure to use the exact same red pen until they lost, with reports that he would even become violent if the pen ran out of ink. And with his temper and hatred of umpires, this sometimes led to multi-game suspensions. And if the team was winning while he was gone, he would not sit on the bench or let a coach manage until the winning came to an end. And with such an influential coach, players were free to express their superstitions as superstition was on the charts. Mark Bellinger religiously took the same route to shortstop and traced his steps on the way back. Jim Palmer was sitting in the exact same spot when the Orioles weren't hitting, which became known as his defensive seat. And he sat next to the bat rack while they were hitting. And if the Orioles needed to rally, Enos Cabell would hit the water cooler repeatedly with other teammates joining in. And instead of disciplining his team, Weaver welcomed it, saying, it's noisy, but we like it. In the midst of their run to a third straight pennant in 1971, pitcher Pat Dobson could not find his socks before his June 8th start and borrowed his teammates as he had a 45 minute discussion with writer Shane Keith. Dobson pitched good that day, but his next start did not go as well. And Dobson knew the reason. It wasn't any mechanical problems or scouting, it was that he didn't wear his teammates' socks. Though he did talk to Shane Keith again, and over his next several starts, he would wear his teammates' socks and made sure to have a conversation with Keith. And it may have worked, as he ended up winning 20 games that season with a 2.9 ERA, good enough to finish 17th in MVP voting, and after he got a salary increase, he gave 1% of it to Chan Keith. And on the other side of his good luck charm, the teammate that gave him those socks was Mike Cuellar, possibly the most superstitious player of all time. The Cuban-born pitcher was given the nickname of Crazy Horse from his teammates as a result of his long list of superstitions. When he flew with the team, he had to fly in a blue suit wearing the same gold chain medallion and he had to wear his magic baseball cap. There was an incident in Milwaukee where he forgot his magic cap and insisted the Orioles fly the cap to him. And when he got it, he noticed it was his practice hat, so he refused to pitch. And if all was right and he wore a suit and had his cap, then he had to eat Chinese food the night before he pitched. And he had to take batting practice on start days even when the DH rule came into existence. And like his manager, he made sure to smoke a cigarette in the same seat between innings. And like many others, he took the exact same path from the dugout to the mound, refusing to go on the field before his teammates, including his catcher. Then he fouled baseball and federal law by not stepping on the foul line. And one of his teammates had to place the ball in the mound for him, and only a select few were allowed to catch his warm-up pitches. His superstition was well known by many, and in 1972, Cleveland outfielder Alex Johnson tried to take advantage of this. He caught a ball to end the third, and timed his arrival to the infield with Cuellar. And when Johnson threw the ball to him, Cuellar ducked and let the ball roll free. 
Then the Bat Boy, Boo Powell, and the umpire all tried to throw the ball to him, and each time, Guayar ducked out of the way. It wasn't until Bobby Grish rolled it to him that he decided he could warm up. Then Johnson tried to do that again the next inning, but Cuellar did not take the bait and waited in the dugout until Johnson flipped the ball to Boob Powell. So, this team put the super in superstitious. But with all this, it's interesting to wonder why exactly players believe such little things as walking in the same pattern or beating the hell out of water cooler will make you perform well. Jim Palmer said regarding the team, We all know that superstitions are winning ballgames for us, but who wants to find out? George Milch, who is an anthropology professor at the University of San Francisco, was one of those who wanted to find out. With the three main activities of baseball and hitting, pitching and fielding, chance plays play an important role most in the hitting and pitching according to him. Obviously hitting has a low success rate, and once the ball is in play, the pitcher has no control of the outcome unless hit to him. And with the uncertainties of baseball, Melch identified three magical behaviors players use to combat the uncertainties. The first is having the same daily routine, especially for someone like Mike Cuellar on the day he pitched. Having that routine can bring comfort and concentration prior to a game as random as baseball. The second is players engaging in rituals, such as banging on the water coolers or trash cans or helmets. Melch brought up a study by behavioral psychologist B.F. Skinner, who looked at why personal rituals get established and he used pigeons. Skinner could get pigeons to do anything he wanted by waiting for them to perform a desired behavior, like pecking or chasing fat people with fries on the beach. Then he rewarded them with food. Then he decided to give the pigeons food every 15 seconds, no matter what they did. He found that the pigeons associated performing a particular action with receiving food, such as walking in a circle or pecking, which is why they continued to do such a thing until more food arrived, associating particular behaviors with a reward. And Skinner felt that ball players may do the same thing. Instead of pigeons, Orioles may bang the cooler, then if runs score, they will continue. But one of the very few things that differentiates us from pigeons is that humans will change their behavior if runs stop scoring and switch to something like ripping a jewel between innings. And the third behavior is using fetishes. Not the dirty ones, but rather associating something like a necklace or batting gloves that coincide with good performance. All of this is kind of an advanced way to say that players have good luck charms and activities they believe in. But in looking at superstitions, it's easy to see the psychological effects it can have on a player. In the midst of the stress of pitching in the majors, or a local beer league softball game, it can be comforting to know everything is in place, and when it's not in place, it can be a huge distraction. Which is why someone like Cuellar would duck out of the way when an opposing player hands him the ball. And that was backed up by another study by the University of Cologne in Germany in 2010 in which participants were within the presence of their lucky charm performed better in different tasks than they did when they were without the charm. The thoughts that appear to someone who feels a sense of worry in the presence of a black cat or the number 13 could appear in an athlete who didn't go through the exact routine. There's probably a big difference overall in these two types, but those negative thoughts creeping in could be the difference for someone on the mound. And those same feelings are reflected in the fans. Everyone knows someone who purposely sits somewhere on the couch or wears something on purpose because the 18 year olds on the screen did well while they were doing it. And if you don't know that person, then it's probably because it's you. Obviously it makes you question how some guy in Idaho sitting backwards on the ceiling thinks he's helping the Lakers win. But there's a weird feeling you get that helps you relate to your pigeon brothers. And when you understand and have your own superstitions like Earl Weaver, then you understand why he was perfectly fine with his players going next level in the superstitions. And the luck was on their side in the first five years of Weaver's tenure, thanks to great pitching and an incredible lineup featuring Boo Powell and Frank and Brooks Robinson. And more than that, thanks to some guy named Todd living in South Baltimore who wore his Edgar Allan Poe shirts every time they played. And you can watch my video about all the curses in sports to learn how all this goes past just baseball.